Hi there guys, Ken here, your Thrifty Apprentice, and welcome back to the studio. Today's video is a Thrifty Review where we will be taking a look at Faber-Castell Classic 24 Grip Watercolor Eco Pencil Set. I picked my pack of Faber-Castell Classic um, Eco Pencils up from my local Michaels, and I have been using them um, for a while now in order to offer you guys my opinion on this review, or in this review. Uh, I will go ahead and say that this video is not sponsored in any way at all, and all of the opinions in it are my own based on the experience I've had with using these products. Now, I'm going to go ahead and move along here, guys, because I don't want to make this video too long. Um, so, we'll take a look at the packaging here. Um, now, this is the classic line. Faber-Castell offers many, many, many different lines of products as far as grade is concerned, they have their school grade, they have a student grade, they have a professional grade. So you pretty much get an all around world of products from the company. Now their classic line of products um, does tend to target the student or the art student, the one that's going to school, taking art classes. However, um, they still do not hold any punches, should I say, on the way that they produce these products. Now, you guys know from previous videos, I've used the Faber-Castell um, Classic 15 Watercolor Crayon Set extensively. Use it all the time in my stamping and my art journaling, and it, they are really fun to use. They're highly pigmented. I've done a review video on these, and I'll link that in the bottom or the description of this video, um, so you guys can go catch it if you would like to. But great product, wonderful product, great for kids, great for adults trying to be kids, great for adults that are being serious. Like I said, as far as stamping art journaling, um, a lot of my videos contain these this product being used. So it led me to want to try out their watercolor pencils, and I picked up the Eco Pencil Set because if I'm not mistaken, these pencils are made from recycled wood. So I will go ahead and throw that out first, first and foremost. So taking a look at the box, your pretty standard run-of-the-mill um, favorite Castell classic advertising or, or uh, printing, should I say. Um, the back of the box just contains a picture of what the grips look like on each pencil. It says that they are eco pencils because I do, again, I do believe they're made from recycled wood. Um, it tells you that the pencils are triangle shape, makes the pencils easy to hold onto and make sure that they don't roll away from you. It includes a brush in the set. Um, the watercolor brush is in the pencil. Just add water. I'm sorry, the watercolor paint. You would think I couldn't read. Is in the pencil, just add water. Um, they're break resistant. The lids sharpen cleanly and will not fall out according to the advertisement. And they contain a soft grip dot, which provides a firm grip and better control. So that's pretty much the packaging, pretty straightforward. Um, does not include any color names for the pencils. Of course, there's no light fast pigment information, and I wasn't really expecting there to be just the fact that this is their um, school grade of product. So let's take a look at the pencils themselves right quick. Each pencil does come in its own colored barrel. The barrel contains these little gray dots for gripping which makes it really easy to hold on to the pencil. It's very comfortable. Um, there's just the favorite castell branding. It says that it's a color grip. Uh, there's a slot here for a name, but again, no color names included. So I just numbered the pencil one through 24, and that's the name of each pencil based on which number it falls into um, how I swatched it. You can see here, uh, I guess you guys can see that the graininess of the wood, which, which is an indicator normally of a recycled product or a recycled piece of wood. So yeah, and the pigment is encased in wax and closed by that recycled wood. So pretty straightforward pencils. 
Um, I do like the fact that they are made of recycled wood. I think that this is really neat. I'm all about trying my best to save and give back to the earth um, with a lot of both my physical and spiritual practices. So let's see. Let's take a look at the color swatch for the pencils here. And I just swatched them out on a really small piece of of watercolor paper here just because I want to get a general feel of what each one looked like as I was going to be using it. Um, the colors are really bright um, for watercolor pencils, especially being in the economy class, being a kid's grade. I think the colors are really vibrant and, and, and saturated. Um, they do have sort of a, I don't know, maybe a semi chalky or or maybe i don't know a kind of granulated texture to them which i'm really not used to because that wasn't in like the artist loft brand that we reviewed and um, for that much it wasn't even in the fine touch brand from hobby lobby that we reviewed so i'm um, however these pencils are a lot more pigmented than those in my opinion maybe they run kind of neck and neck with the artist loft, which I think is funny, or maybe it's not considering this is Faber-Castell, so you would expect it to be a really decent performing product. Um, let's look at some things that I've done with it. Then we'll get right to the pros and cons. Um, I started out with the pencils in another sketchbook that I have just kind of doodling. I really wanted to get a feel for how the pencils laid down as far as um, the softness of the lid, being comfortable in holding and coloring, um, how light the um, pigmentation would be holding it closer, I mean, further away from the, the tip or how dark I could get the pigment to lay down, holding it closer to the tip. I wanted to see how they would blend, um, just how opaque they were so that I could see how much layering could be done. So basically, I started out just playing around with the pencils in every aspect that I possibly could to see what I could achieve with them. Um, so, and then I just kind of came over here and threw color down. I really wasn't trying to do anything fantastic here. I really just wanted to see how the colors would lay down and blend. Now, I must admit, these particular pencils, I don't really like that much on this mixed media paper. This is the uh, Canson XL mixed media paper. I'm not the hugest fan of these pencils on this particular paper, but it um, did lend to giving me a feel, a general feel initially of how the pencils were performed. So after um, playing around, I decided I would do an actual painting with just the pencils. And I did this in my Jane Davenport book, um, art, um, art journal book. And it is this one. And this was the full painting that I did with the pencils. I love the way they perform on this paper. And um, I think it's because this paper has more sizing on it. So it grips the pigment from the pencil more um, and then this paper actually, I think, blends out better than the Canson XL does. But I'm actually a big fan of the Jane Davenport mixed media uh, books. So I kind of like it. I love these pencils on here. Um, the colors remain really rich and saturated even after being watered down. The pigments do disperse really easily. The lids are soft. So I'm just going to show you guys. Hopefully you'll be able to see this. The lids are really kind of semi-creamy. They're not hard at all. Um, they do wear down kind of quickly. I will admit that that was one of the cons about the pencils that I uh, I didn't really care for too much. They they wear down really, really quickly. And of course, with it being made from recycled wood, when you sharpen them, you have to be careful because you don't want to sharpen away too much at one time. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. Now, we're going to get into pricing of these pencils in just a moment. But I did want to throw out all of the major facts that I've experienced in the performance before we talked about that. Um, again, they stayed saturated. The black is actually pretty opaque. Um, it lends to really great shadowing and silhouetting. Um, this landscape turned out really well. The water, I think, turned out beautifully. And I really just use shades of purples and, and violets more so than anything in this composition. So I was really 
pleased with the way that this turned out and the way that the pencils perform um, using limited colors. However, I was still able to blend different shades and you were um, different colors or different shades of colors, excuse me. And you're able to see each shade stand out as well as blend in. So really happy with that performance. And then of course the very last tutorial to go up on the channel was a watercolor pencil tutorial where um, I took you guys on a journey to paint this slice of watermelon and this glass of watermelon lemonade. Now, this is a prime example or a very fine example, should I say, of why YouTube creators should actually practice what they're going to do on film before they do it. Um, and I really should have practiced this because I made some pretty big boo-boos in it. My glass of lemonade is leaning. There's no shadowing the way that there should be, especially um, grounding the focal images to the table that's up under it. Um, I really didn't put in the background that I wanted to. However, the reason I went on and posted that video is because I kind of wanted people to see that YouTube creators, everybody, every artist, everyone doing anything, we all kind of have a bad day. We all kind of have an off day. But the thing is to, as I tell you guys, just keep painting and press on and not give up. So I did go ahead and post that video. And despite all of the little mishaps I may have had, I hope you guys were able to pick up something and that you were able to add to your own art journey. So I love the way they performed in this, despite all of the mistakes that may have been made. I mean, I did the entire composition and nothing but the eco pencils, and I was really pleased with them. Um, I'm really pleased with these pencils overall. Straight up, there's not many cons to them, other than the fact that there is no light fast information included with the pencils so you know that they're not of a professional grade so they are not something that i would suggest for any major artwork um anything that's going to maybe be exposed to constant sunlight or or harsh lighting anything that you're planning on selling or hanging in a gallery maybe no this is not um the set that you would go out and purchase however if you're a beginner if you are someone who's looking for a really economical pencil to add to like your travel set um, or add to just your collection so that you'll have something to do, paint with in your art journals and, and your cards that you make. I really recommend this set. I think they're really good pencils. Um, highly pigmented, very economical. Let's talk about price right quick. And we'll also do some comparison of them to the other ones we've reviewed on this channel. Now, um, you cannot find the Eco Pencils at Joann's or Walmart. I, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm so sorry. You cannot find the Eco Pencils at Hobby Lobby. I was only able to find the 12 pack at Joann's and Walmart, but I was able to source three sites that had the 24 pack of Eco Pencils listed. That was Jerry's Autorama, Amazon, as well as Michael. Now on Jerry's, the 24 pack is $11.99. Um, of course you have to pay shipping unless you meet their free shipping criteria. Um, on Amazon, the pencils are $13.97. Again, if you're a Prime member there, you get free shipping. If not, then criteria is to be met. And at Michael's, you're able, I was able to walk into my Michael's, so they are actually in Michael's store stores. Um, and I'm sure they're in J Jerry's stores as well. Or you can get them at Michael's online. Now, um, at Michael's, they are listed for $15. But of course, you know, you get to use a 40% coupon in store and most of the time online. So the pencils break down to um, only $9 for the pack of 24. So Michael's, from what I was able to see, is the cheapest place to pick them up in combination with the coupon. Um, so very affordable, very affordable pencils. Um, great as far as the fact that they're targeting recycling and trying to keep the earth clean. The pigmentation from the pencils are really bright and vibrant and saturated. They hold well once the pigments are dispersed and watered down in water. Um, they are opaque enough to be opaque, but they're also transparent enough to layer in lift, if that makes any sense. 
And again, I think those are great qualities for these to be such an economical pencil. Now let's just take a look at the color swatches in comparison to some other things. Now, the very first one we ever reviewed on this channel was the Fine Touch, which is a house brand by Hobby Lobby. And in comparison, um, I would definitely give the point to Faber Castell. Um, more pigmentation, more saturation in the color, and less um, depletion of color when water is added to disperse the pigments. So, over if I had to choose one or the other, it would definitely be the favorite Castell. Um, next, we looked at a crafting brand, which was pen and paper, which can only be found at Books a Million. Um, but I thought they these were a really great performing pencil at the time that I got them. And for them to be coming from a crafting company, I thought that the colors were really saturated with them as well. And when you hold them up against the Faber-Castell, I have to be honest, I will say that the pen and paper kind of gives the Faber-Castell a run for their money. Um, other than the fact that the Faber-Castell are more accessible. And for that reason, I recommend them over the uh, pen to paper. Uh, next was the Artist Loft brand, um, which is a house brand by Michaels. Now, I'll lay these side by side so you guys can see these here. I think that the colors are actually really, really comparable. These brands are really comparable to me. Uh, the saturation and the colors are really comparable to me. Um, the, they withhold the same information, no light fast, no pigment information. The advantage that the Artist Loft has over Faber Castell is that they actually have color name on the barrels. It, it's really that simple. Faber Castell doesn't. So, um, a little information away. If color names on the barrel is something that's important to you, then you may lean more so towards the Artist Loft. If not, then you would, could probably lean to pick up either one. Although I will admit the Artist Loft is probably going to be cheaper because these pencils, regular price are $5.99 and you can use the regular 40% off Michael's coupons. So you're definitely going to get more bang for your buck with the Artist Loft. And that is it. So those are the pencils that we've reviewed on this um, channel so far. So yeah, guys, um, pretty straightforward video. Definitely suggest them, definitely recommend them. If you're in the market for a really economical watercolor pencil, one that you wanna buy for yourself, one that you wanna give as a gift, one that you wanna buy for your kids, because this is not something they're gonna get tired of, then yes, I definitely recommend the Faber-Castell Classic 24 Grip for easy coloring um, watercolor pencils. All right, guys, and that's all that I have. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. Go ahead and subscribe so you can keep up with the content. And remember, as I tell you always, just keep painting.